Well, that was a rather bizarre evening at Carrow Road, wasn't it? It was a successful evening at Carrow Road in terms of picking up points. Three points in the bag for Norwich City. A 4-2 victory against Watford. But my goodness, that doesn't tell half the story. 2-0 up, back to 2-2, eventually winning the game 4-2. David Wagner in his post-match interview with BBC Radio Norfolk saying that some fans should stay at home after they booed the substitutions. Uh, it came um, after Josh Sargent and Ona Hernandez were taken off um, and replaced for slightly more defensively minded players. Let's let's go from the off. I, th- I think a few people probably looked at the uh, the team lineup and 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 questioned the centre back pairing. I think um, we're probably on about our seven hundred and twelfth centre back pairing of the season. Um, Sorensen came in next to Gibson. Obviously, Duffy is injured. Um, Wagner did have two recognised centre-backs on the um, on the bench in the sh- in the form of, of Grant Hanley um, and Danny Bart. He opted with, with Sorensen and, to be honest, um, did a, a, a sound enough job. Not too much of an issue there. Um, alongside Gibson, Norwich started brightly. They looked slick. Watford were all over the shot. Watford are a really strange team. I mean... Obviously, watched them um, in in the reverse fixture, and it was a very similar performance from them that night. They look frighteningly good going forwards at, at times. They've got some really good players in there: um, Kone, Sema, um, Martins, like players that can really make a difference. But defensively, they are absolutely all over the shop. And Norris took advantage of that. Ashley Barnes with a header to take the lead. It was a great cross from Ronald Hernandez, who I thought. Let's put it out there from the start. I thought he had one of his best games in a Norwich City shirt and um, looked really, really bright. Absolutely skinned Jamal Lewis. Lovely ball in. Ashley Barnes head at 1-0. 2-0 Josh Sargent penalty at the second time of asking. Um, I think that's eight goals in 12 starts in the championship for Josh Sargent. Now, if anyone wants to come in my comment section and argue that he's not the best championship striker, then you're absolutely more than welcome to... Uh, and at that point, you're kind of cruising into half time. You're going, oh, we're tuning up, happy days, everything's going well. Watford haven't really laid a glove on us. And then uh, comes a, a goal out of nowhere, really. It was a beautiful reverse pass um, from, uh, I think it was Kone, potentially, into um, into into the left back, crosses it in, uh, Rykovic. Um, who just always seems to score against us, um, or the, despite the Watford fans not particularly warming to him. Uh, 2-1. And and I must admit, it was strange sort of talking to my friends at half-time. You're going, you know, I'm almost disappointed in, in that, that that's only 2-1. You know, going into this game, you'd have absolutely snapped your hand off for a 2-1 lead at half-time. But it didn't feel like that. It felt like Norwich had, had maybe thrown away a real opportunity to properly kick on. And then again, Norwich come out second half, look a little bit sluggish, and, and the key moment in terms of the narrative comes on about the fifty five in the fifty fifth minute. Um, Josh Sargent, who again had been excellent, comes off on a Hernandez, who had been absolutely excellent, comes off. This is on fifty six minutes. They are replaced um, by Christian Fasnacht and Marcelino Nunez. Now, m- <laughs> plenty of Caro booed this decision and I fully understand it and we will get on to that later but if we're taking solely this isolated incident I kind of understood it even Josh Sargent was saying like calm down everyone he was clearly hobbling he clearly still isn't match fit um, and it was the same with um, it was the same with Ronald Hernandez um, you know clearly managing minutes at the moment so if we're talking about substitutions in this game yeah like I kind of get it um, I guess the only other option may have been bringing on Van Hooydonk um, for for Josh Sargent, um, but kind of not really that annoyed about those two substitutions. But <laughs> as the script was probably written, um, Watford equalised, and at this point you're thinking, my goodness, like Watford are going to go on and win the game again. Norwich have gone two 0 up against Watford, and we're going to throw it away. It was an absolutely stunning strike from Asprilla. It reminded me slightly of uh, the, the goal that Sheffield Wednesday scored against us in 2019, something like that. Um, Fernando Forestieri. It was a an absolutely beautiful strike. Um, you know, plenty of Car Road applauding that one. Nothing you could really do about that goal. But you're thinking, oh my goodness, like if we 
if we lose this, like that's probably playoffs gone. And it's crazy the the, the the fine margins and the mentality of football. It is bonkers and it's up and down all the while. Um but it wasn't to be. Um, Norwich kicked on and they and they found a, a, a goal. It was a fantastic strike from Gabriel Sarah. Once again, a lovely bit of um, interplay from Ashley Barnes, who has, it was really come into his own in, in terms of that kind of number 10 role. I know he was playing up front for, for a little bit of that game, but his link-up play has been phenomenal in, in the last couple of home games. Um, it was a lovely assist. It was a fantastic finish from Gabriel Sarah. And, you know, Gabriel Sarah is one of those players that, that does have the potential to drift out of games slightly, but just has that match-winning quality. It was a superb strike with his left foot into the bottom corner. And five minutes later, the other substitute, Christian Fasnat, pops up with a goal. It's like he's bundled in. I mean, Watford's defence were absolutely all over the shop. And, you know, they've got some serious issue, issues to look at there. Again, it was Jack Stacey, the architect down the right-hand side, I thought was really busy tonight. Um, pops up, um, delivers a nice cross. Christian Fastnacht on the end of it. Happy days. 4 2. We're into sixth. You know, everything should be rosy. But there's a, a confusing atmosphere around the place at the moment. And I think this has probably been bubbling for a, for a little while. And, you know, you, you certainly can't argue that it hasn't been a consistent atmosphere. Um, even when we're winning, there is um, slight discomfort amongst the fan base. I think it probably stemmed in terms of recent times from that performance against QPR when you're winning the game and you take off Sargent um, and you take off Stacey, again, probably to manage minutes. And, like, you know, it's a long season and, and we've had plenty of injuries this season. Um, so it probably stems from that and we didn't win that game. So there's obvious frustration around taking your kind of best players off um, in this one. I think it runs deeper than that. I think the discontent from Norwich fans comes from years of that feeling like we're being talked down to from the, um, you, you know, the upper echelons at, at the football club, whether that be sporting directors, owners, um, managers even. And that's probably where the disconnect comes from. And I think it's quite easy to solve. I think you, you, you talk to fans nicely, you make them feel engaged. And, you know, Norwich do a lot of things right. Um, and I think they're so close to having it bang on, but it does feel like the whole season is still very much on a knife edge, and I'm not sure that you can have that temperament and that atmosphere around the place if you do want to genuinely contend for the top six. I've said it multiple times this season that this side are more than good enough to get into the top six. I look at some of the players tonight, um, Borja Sainz, Josh Sargent, Gabriel Sarah, Angus Gunn, Kenny McLean, even Ashley Barnes to an extent, like some real championship quality in the side. Um, they are more than good enough for a top six place. I still don't think we've got the, the most competent head coach and I think there is work to be done there. Um, but y y we've almost got to the stage now where you know he's not getting sacked. So we may as well give up that kind of discourse until the end of the season we, we almost just need to back the boys blind now and we have to get behind them because nothing is changing until the end of the season and we can either moan and we can groan and I think it is justified at times or we can have blind faith and just hope that something clicks for the rest of the season and to be fair over the past kind of couple of months at home, the, the the form has been good and the running looks fairly kind as well. There's a couple of tough games in there, but actually, compared to other teams in and around us, like the the, the running does look fair. And 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 Wagner's got feisty in his post match interview, and to an ex like a certain extent, like fair play, like you know, emotions run high. He's he's had a pop at, at the fans. He said that. Those that have booed, you know, aren't true fans and, and belong at home. I think that's harsh. I think fans are more than justified to have their opinion. We pay one of the most expensive season tickets in the championship. Um, you know, we have been put through some some fairly turgid times in in, in, in past seasons, and you know, the only person you, I guess, you can direct those that anger to during a match is the head coach. Um, whether it's his fault in, entirely is, is is up for debate. But 
you know, if you're taking things personally and you're a professional footballer or a professional head coach, like that's just part of the job to an extent. And and you kind of have to suck it up. Um, Wagner's take it on the fans. It's a brave move. We will see how that goes. Uh, I, I think the relationship is already fractured. I, I can only imagine that probably fractures it further. We are just in a very strange position because we find ourselves in the top six with a capable squad. Um, but this bubbling discontent um, underneath it and, and the constant feeling that we're only ever one result away from um, discourse again. And, and that's not a particularly healthy place to be, but that is where we find ourselves um, for at least the end of, of this season. The other bit of really bad news is that Johnny Rowe has been ruled out for a couple of months Um it looked bad, didn't it? I, I think when when you see injuries in football that are kind of off the ball and you fear the worst in terms of muscle injuries. So Rowe's season has come to a halt. Um, Wagner said that he hopes it's not season ending. There is possibility that it may be. We are going to have to find ways around that, um, whether that be Ole Hernandez, whether that be Christian Fasnacht. We just cannot possibly have an injury now to an Ashley Barnes or a, a Borja Science because that would be cataclysmic at this stage in the season. Um, let me know your thoughts. Norwich 4, Watford 2, but we are on this video talking about other things than the match and that feels strange but it feels very Norwich. Um, let me know down in the comment section below. Uh, Norwich are in the top six at least for now. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Bye-bye.